So China's back with yet another brutal surprise to the tech race. Now, a week ago, we talked about how Menace AI started to reinvent what AI models can do. They revealed a powerful agent that can automate almost everything for you. But guess what? China just disrupted China again, which means they disrupted global technology companies, including US companies like OpenAI and Anthropic. Now, the original DeepSeek has officially launched their new and improved version 3. It has been less than a few months and they've iterated at least twice to bring the world a stronger model. Now, it's great news for the global economy, bad news for Sam Altman. He's going to have yet another sleepless night. Looking at the major benchmarks, we can see that DeepSeek version 3 is an enhanced version. It beats the competition in three main categories, complex math problems, medical reasoning, and coding. For the other two categories like general reasoning, it comes in at second just behind ChatGPT 4.5. But once again, performance is just one benchmark. The edge DeepSeek has is the ability to charge much less and still be sustainable. Remember the advantage Chinese AI models have. They don't have the burden of needing next generation chips and they have software workarounds as well so they can charge less and still be profitable. Now, DeepSeek V3 is very affordable versus OpenAI's ChatGPT. Now, we are talking about 20 to 50 times cheaper depending if you need inputs or outputs. But either way, this puts China's solution in a league of its own. Sure, it might not be the best possible solution in the world, but quantity has a quality of its own. Companies using DeepSeek can run more operations at a very high level without bankrupting themselves. Now, this is especially true for countries that are way behind the AI race. Southeast Asia, Latin America and Europe, DeepSeek allows them to catch up with the Americans and not have their economies left behind in the dust. Now, on Twitter, people have been trying to push the limits with DeepSeek and some of the solutions they create are simply mind-blowing. Now, the user Sharma created this website using DeepSeek V3 and it wrote 800 lines of code continuously without any breaks. This is next generation nightmare fuel for OpenAI. DeepSeek is generally free, it's open source, and it's tremendously fast. This is the power of open source. You unlock tremendous innovation because competition goes through the roof. Now imagine the possibilities this can unlock. Building a website is only scratching the surface. It's the tip of the iceberg. Now just listen to the CEO of Perplexity. When DeepSeek first came out, he correctly analyzed how the tech sanctions have failed. What the US did was to force China to cultivate their talent and find workarounds to win the AI race. But that kind of talent they're building to do that will become an edge for them over time. And then these guys come out, come out with like a crazy model that's like 10x cheaper in API pricing than GPT-40 and 15x cheaper than Sonnet, I believe. Uh, really fast, 16 tokens per sec 60 tokens per second, and pretty much equal or better in some benchmarks and worse in some others, but like roughly in that ballpark of four O's quality. And they did it all with like approximately just 2048 H 800 GPUs, which is actually equal to like that's like 20 to 30 X lower than the amount of GPUs that um, GPT-4 is usually trained on. They did, and did roughly $5 million in total uh, compute budget. They did it with so little money and such an amazing model. Gave it away for free, wrote a technical paper. Now sure, China doesn't have the latest hardware. They can't access NVIDIA's line of Blackwell chips. And is that a disadvantage? Absolutely. But leaning on software in the meantime clearly is working. Now necessity is the mother of invention. China doesn't have that much capital to invest versus the US. Trump has his $500 billion project Stargate, Beijing doesn't. But that also leads to a lot of wastage and inefficiencies in US tech companies. OpenAI builds AI foundation models, but the way they spend money is breathtaking. OpenAI's operating costs are insane. They spent $7 billion in 2024. Deep Six operating budget is possibly just 2% of that which means unless OpenAI can slam down their operating costs or they create some groundbreaking model, they will run into a brick wall sooner or later. DeepSeek will outlast them. It's a key reason why ChatGPT's prices are just so high. It's because Sam Altman is burning through tons of investment money. 
Now, here's the challenge China has thrown Western tech companies. You are now in an economic war of financial attrition. Now, sure, China might not have access to global investment money like you, but they still have over a trillion dollars in trade surplus. Their bond yields are also very low compared to the US. China's 10-year borrowing cost is less than 2% even after the recent run-up in yields. The US is well above 4%. Beijing can run their economy hot and incur big deficits to fight the AI war if they really want to. However, the US can't. They can only rely on external investment dollars from the world. And that's why Trump is calling for so much outside investment. The US cannot borrow more money without crashing the greater economy. There's just too much uncertainty with US inflation thanks to Trump's trade war. China can raise the money. And if we look carefully at what Deep Six upgrade is good for, we can immediately get a hint of what China is gunning for. Now, the model is excellent in coding and math, which means it can be easily integrated into key industries in China. And this goes well beyond just creating a website lightning fast. We are already talking about self-driving capabilities, which BYD is already using. It can definitely be also used in the banking sector. And let's not forget healthcare as well. DeepSeek is being used to optimize medical solutions and patient outcomes, real-world users that benefit society. While tech giants in the US are still looking to create the baddest, the deadliest, and most powerful AI on planet Earth. So two very different approaches from two very different countries. And if there's one pivotal moment that slapped OpenAI around was DeepSeek and their decision to go open source. One key advantage it brought is allowing a ton of applications to be built on top of it. And since it's free, it allows for faster adoption and bigger breakthroughs. Even NVIDIA admits the power of going open source. The quality actually improves. The benefit of open source is the contribution of so many people and the scrutiny. You know, very importantly, you can't just put any random stuff into open source. You'll get laughed off, laughed off the internet. You've got to put good stuff on the open source because the scrutiny is, in, is intense. And so, so I think the, the uh, open source uh, provides all of that great collaboration to accelerate, uh, accelerate innovation, escalate excellence, uh, ensure transparency, attract scrutiny, all of that. So China's strategy has managed to commoditize the base layer of AI. All the foundational models are now in a race to the bottom. Going open source allows DeepSeek to also recruit and attract top-tier talent. The company is building an ecosystem that makes it impossible to be sanctioned. Now, the next battleground for AI is no longer about who creates the better foundation models. Those will continue to be iterated for sure, but it's about who can win the inference race. In other words, who can make AI more useful in the real economy for real industries. And this is where the West is lagging behind. By 2032, AI spending will exceed half a trillion dollars. The biggest tech giants will be spending a combined $371 billion this year, a 44% increase versus last year. Now, this sounds very impressive, but are they spending on the right things? A ton of money is being used to build up the infrastructure of AI, bigger and scarier data centers. But will they still neglect investing in inference? Now, if we look at January to August last year, a lot of money has been spent on GPUs and chips. Capital expenditures were through the roof. Take Google, for example. They have their own AI solution called Gemini. On the KPEX side, they spent an impressive $29 billion in just 9 months. But on inference, they spent only $1 billion. Together with R&D Plus Research, the total investment comes to just $4 billion. It's very likely that China has lit a big fire on US big tech to level up their inference game. And if they want to fight a sustainable war, they have to monetize their AI solutions by making it directly useful to their core business. This is where the Chinese ecosystem really fleshed down the plan. AI by itself isn't the holy grail. Having a powerful business with paying customers is enormous leverage. And that's why many Chinese companies like ByteDance and Alibaba, they have the synergy edge. They can use AI to enhance their current business model to unlock real value. Now, Joe Tsai of Alibaba explains this difference perfectly. If you think about it, Microsoft and OpenAI are two separate companies, 
they have a very nice partnership right now, but maybe in the future they will, you know, maybe go their separate ways. So Microsoft actually does not have their proprietary development of AI. They basically outsourced it to OpenAI. Right. Amazon is in the cloud business, but they don't have proprietary AI that yeah. they developed themselves in terms of large language model. Yeah. Facebook has their large language model, which they open source, Llama, yeah. but they don't have a cloud business. The only American company that has sort of both internal, in-house, is Google, but Google is number three in cloud, and AI is, you know, some say they're not as good as open AI, right? You come to China, you look at Alibaba, we're the only company that both run a leading cloud business and also we're competitive in AI. So the future of AI or the greatest upside won't really be companies building the foundation models. It will be real companies and how they use AI to better benefit their customers and business model. We are starting to move out the value chain at lightning speed thanks to China's deep seek. Now, I believe this is the real Sputnik moment and it has massive consequences. As such, we are beginning to see chip makers around the world wake up to the reality, especially around US sanctions. And here's what they are probably thinking. China is already disrupting the market using less powerful AI chips. Sooner or later, they will create their own versions and disrupt us as well. We need to sell more chips to the world today before it's too late. And that's why they are pushing back on the AI chip restrictions. Companies like Nvidia, they want a full repeal of the AI diffusion rule. They want Trump to rethink the entire semiconductor war. They want to sell as many AI chips and processors to the world while there's still time. They know what's coming down the line. China will create their own chips and supply the world if the US continues with their restrictions. Now for the uninitiated, here's what's going on. Biden divided the world into tier 1, tier 2 and tier 3 countries. And countries in the bottom two tiers which is most of the world, come by the best chips and they are restricted to certain quantities as well. The US is afraid of chips somehow reaching China, so they are punishing the world to really prevent that. But herein lies the risk. If Chinese companies like Huawei close the gap, they will steal market share from US companies like Nvidia. They will drive down the price and gain a foothold in the market. And just like Nvidia, Huawei could build their own software ecosystem and lock buyers in. If that happens, it's game over for US chip makers. And that's why they want to sell to the world now. US players want to secure their market share today before China comes in tomorrow. And make no mistake, this is really an existential moment for Nvidia. That's why their share price has been dropping. If Trump doesn't repeal the AI diffusion rule, the writing will be on the wall. And that's how shocking DeepSeek is. It's now one of the most highest scoring models in the world. Looking at the scoreboard once again, it has leapfrogged many competitors like Rocktree and ChatGPT. So if this is what China can accomplish with less advanced chips, just imagine what will happen once they close the gap. The moment Huawei can make chips on par with Nvidia, it will be game over on two fronts. Chinese AI models will start to iterate like never before. They will also start to sell affordable semiconductors to the world. So has China won yet? No, but if the US continues this pointless game of sanctions, the answer would most definitely be a yes to everything. The only way to compete with China is head to head and not hide behind cheap restrictions. But let me know what you think. Who will win the AI race? Will Trump roll back the cheap sanctions? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.